Okay, uh, in this video, I'm going to start just by showing you some of the tools that will be useful if you're new to, to Python um, or haven't kind of used it locally before. So we're going to do everything in Python via, uh, well, to be, we're going to install everything using Anaconda. So Anaconda is a package that installs Python applications, Python tools for you, also can install editors and all sorts of stuff. So it's really useful. Uh, the reason this, we use this, the reason I recommend you using this, is it allows you to manage multiple different Python installs. So if you've got different projects on the go, you can kind of switch between them easily. Um, it also just simplifies everything and it runs across operating systems. So if you, you know, if you're new to all this and you just want to get started, I recommend uh, Anaconda for sure. Uh, you get it from anaconda.org. Um, uh, you can go to download Anaconda somewhere up here and you get the individual edition, download it and follow the instructions there. Um, after you've downloaded and installed it and run it, you will end up with something that looks a bit like this. So this is going to give you a bunch of things that you can install and run. Um, so if you haven't installed it, you'll get the install options down here. Because I've installed some of these things, I can already see launch. Um, but before we, we go and do that, I'm going to actually install some extra packages that you'll need to do as well. Um, so Anaconda works by having multiple environments. Um, so the environments are over here, listed here. So the environments are kind of different uh, Python setups that you can use, and they'll end up with a name up here. So currently we're in the base or the root uh, environment, and we don't want to use that. We want to have our own environment. So you can go over to here to environments uh, and click in down here in create. And we're going to call it something like A2E. Um, and it's going to tell us a little bit where it's putting it. And we're going to select the Python version we want to use. Now, you should be using uh, Python 3. I generally recommend using the most recent Python version you can get your hands on. Um, for this course, it doesn't make much difference at all. Uh, you hit Create. And then it's going to kind of churn away and set stuff up for you. And uh, maybe if this is the first time you've done it, it might take a bit longer. Basically, it's just copying files and getting everything organized. Um, once that finishes, we're going to install some libraries or some packages that we need uh, for most of the work that you'll be doing. So these are common packages uh, for maths and linear algebra. So that's NumPy or NumPy. Um, and then for plotting, we're going to install matplotlib, which is going to allow us to make some graphs and show off the results of some of our experiments. Um, so once the environment has loaded, we're going to do that. Um, it's still churning away down there. Um, hoping it's going to take not take so long that I have to fill uh, by talking uh, about nonsense while you wait. Um, maybe you can just fast forward this bit, let's see. Or I can edit it out. Um, let's just see how that goes. I'm just going to sit here quietly and wait then <laughs> while that happens. There we go. It is done. So this gives us a list of packages that are already installed. So Python's installed. That's useful. Um, but I can go up here to installed. And I can switch to not installed, which shows me all the things that, that clearly is not already installed. And there's a lot of them, 17,000 and whatnot down there. Um, so to get the packages we want, I am going to uh, jump up here into search packages. So it's still just loading up the index because there's so many things. Uh, and I'll type numpy. Uh, and that will appear down here somewhere. There we go. I'll click that because I want that installed. And I'm also going to install matplotlib. Um, so matplot, there we go, matplotlib. So these are the kind of key tools that you use. Um, you don't need anything else for the applications, uh, for the lecture notes or for the tutorial sheets, unless you choose to. Um, in general, using external tools is, is, is just what all programmers do. Um, these are going to be the best implementations of, of many things. Of course, for, for some of the things like the algorithms you're learning about, you need to write your own. But ultimately, when you use these things in the wild, you want to make as much use as, as external tools as possible. OK, so we've, we've clicked matplotlib. We've cl clicked numpy. I'm going to hit apply. And it should tell me what it's going to install. Um, it's going to install a bunch of things. So these are the things that we didn't ask for are the dependencies. Um, so these are additional packages. Uh, and I hit apply again. Uh, now, if you're familiar with the command line, you could do this via Conda on the command line. So Conda has its own command line interface. Um, you could also use a tool like pip, uh, which is a Python package manager. Um, but if all of that just sounds like complete nonsense to you, um, then 
you're, <laughs> you're not alone. Uh, and I recommend just following these steps going through Anaconda and I'll do pretty much everything that, that you're ever going to need. So we're just going to wait for this to complete. Um, this is downloading the packages, installing them. Right, we're done. That's good. Um, and so now we'll go back to home and we're going to look for uh, Jupyter. So Jupyter uh, down here is going to be the notebook server we're going to use. So all the tools uh, that you've been provided, all the files you provided are Jupyter notebooks. So these are kind of, they're, they're, they're files that contain Python code, but they can also mix both data and text so you can describe what you're doing. So that's what a Jupyter notebook is. Um, we're going to go and install Jupyter Lab up here, which gives you a bit more of an uh, sort of architecture around that. Um, so I'm going to hit install there. And again, it's going to go off and in install various bits and bobs for me. Uh, and once this is in and installed, hopefully that's everything we need um, to get up and running. Um, and from there on out, we can start opening files and working with them. Um, yeah, so there are two ways you can write Python. Well, there's multiple ways you can write Python, but uh, the kind of two most common ways are one is to use an IDE or a text editor where you just write Python files, Python scripts, just as sort of plain text into ind individual files. And then you can execute those files and run those files to run your program. Uh, or you could load them into other Python files as libraries or modules. Um, so that's when you start writing larger programs that do more complicated things, that's typically what uh, you will end up doing. Uh, notebooks are great for writing small bits of code uh, or for the kind of thing we're doing here where we want to have some descriptions some documentation along with the code. So the lecture notes and the self-study activities are notebooks because they fit really well into this kind of paradigm. So a bit of code, a bit of writing uh, and use it to describe your results. Um, what I find in, in my research world at the moment, lots of people who are doing machine learning, robotics, uh, mathematics, data science are all using JupyterLab uh, and Jupyter Notebooks because it allows them to sort of tell a story with the data, to, to do various experiments and show the results. So it, it works very well when you're trying to communicate the results of what you're doing with your code. Um, this is still going. I'm going to keep talking. Uh, feel free if you want to uh, jump ahead um, to when the screen starts changing in more interesting ways. I'm just going to keep talking because it's easier than, than stopping the video in order to edit it. Um, I guess the other thing I'm going to say while we're doing this is then to think about how you're going to submit your tutorial work. Um, because if you use the notebook for the tutorial sheet, the cheat sheet, um, make sure you save and either kind of print out that tutorial sheet uh, but what will make most sense is to kind of take it along to your uh, tutorial on your laptop or some way that you can share it so that you're able to to um, work through it kind of in the tutorial. But that's certainly something you're going to have to work out with your tutor. Uh, maybe doing this one online might work. Okay, so that's that's installed. So now we have the, the launch option. If you are going to write uh, stuff in an IDE, then using VS Code is a really nice... Uh, a really good way to go. It's a very good IDE. It's very popular at the moment. Okay, now that's downloaded, we're ready to get started and start looking at some, some Python code. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to launch Jupyter Lab. Uh, and this is where we're going to browse and, and edit our, our Python code. Um, so it's going to open up like this. We can create some new book, uh, some new notebooks. Uh, we can look at some other file types as well. But what we're going to look at first, what I'm going to show you is how the um, how the uh, self-study exercises can be downloaded and used. So first thing you do is you go to this URL up here. It's in the lecture notes. Um, this is a Git repository. Git is a way of managing source code, version control, and distribution. Uh, you don't need to worry about any of that. You can just go to this green button here, code, give me code, uh, hit download zip. And it's going to go and download a zip file for us of all the code we need. Uh, if I go over to the finder here, we can see it's given us a, a zip file. I'm going to chuck it over into this A2 lectures directory where we're going to do all the code. And you can see actually in here already, I've got the tutorial sheet and I've got the um, lecture notes, which is all these are all Python notebooks. Uh, but first thing we can do is look at the self study exercises. So I'm going to unzip that. Uh, and that's going to give me a list of files. But we don't want to just look at them uh, in the in the finder like that. We're going to go back to JupyterLab, uh, and we're going to go and browse to those files on, on our machine. So I'm going to open the file browser, which is up here. And that gives us the, the list of things we'd see in the finder. Um, 
as normal. I'm going to go into code, uh, A2 lectures, which is where it was. And now we've got the same directory structure here. So I can jump back to finder. Um, that's this directory structure here. So I can open that. Um, and here we go. So I'm going to open A2 computer engineering and jump straight to the 00. zero uh, in fact, let me just pull that all the way to one side so you can see. Here's are the files. Uh, double click on here, and that's going to open the first notebook. This notebook kind of gives you an idea of the structure, talks you through it. Uh, and then you can click on these links to open these individual files. So the links here correspond to individual files. Um, so I'm going to click on the first one, and that's going to open up the first notebook. If you're new to a notebook, there's a couple of things that are interesting here. First of all, this is you know this is formatted text, uh, and then you've got these windows where you see some code. This is where we write Python. Um, so these are individual cells. If I double click in one of these places, it's going to actually show me what's underlying the text. And in this case, it's Markdown. Um, so I can open up all these things. I can hit Escape um, to exit them. Maybe I can't. Uh, certainly Shift and Return uh, will run those files and close them up again. And then you can do that the same sort of file cells. Uh, and then we've got some Python here. So here it's the same. I can edit the Python. I can hit uh, Shift Return to run it. If you go up here to the Run menu, you've also got these different um, options if you want. Um, so that those are useful to know, and there's various uh, various other things you can look up up there. So here we've got some Python. Uh, three plus three, three is six. Three, uh, I can write, sorry, three plus three is six. Three plus seven is ten. Um, I can change those variables and it can run. So what we're going to do in all of this is we're going to type some Python into these cells, uh, hit uh, shift return, and it's going to run them for us. Um, I could also add some cells. I could define a function in here. Uh, say hello. Print. Hello, oops. Hello world. <laughs> Typing's not my strong suit. And that will define it. It won't run it. But down here, I could run uh, a function that I defined elsewhere. So I see the output that appears underneath here, just like when I did uh, 3 plus 3. Oops. I get the output underneath. And if I make some mistakes, uh, I get some errors. It's all within this window. This is all we're going to need for writing, um, writing Python. The nice thing is if I save this, um, I can hit save there, uh, also the standard save shortcuts, and close it down again. When I open it up, you'll see that the Python is saved. So when you kind of come and go from these things, it will save the, the files. And then you can share these files with your, your tutor uh, or however you're, you're planning to submit. Um, not, not these files, but your, you, the answers to your tutorial sheets you can, you can share this way. Um, so that's the basics of, of the of how you use a notebook. Um, there are Python cells, there are Markdown cells, you write code in the Python cells, you can add and remove cells, you run them. Um, hopefully it's 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 kind of um, it's reasonably intuitive. Uh, I'll show you in another video, I'll, I'll run a long video of me using it to give you a sense of how, how I use it in case that helps. Um, if we jump back here, there are, there are nine um, activities for you to go through. Um, if you're new to Python uh, and new, sorry, this is popping up. Let's just get rid of that. Um, if you're new to Python, uh, then I really recommend doing all of them. Uh, if you're new, if you're reasonably new to programming, if all you've ever done are the MATLAB exercises, then yes, absolutely do all of them. Um, if you use Python before, then I think just looking at things like seven and eight, so the numerical computation using NumPy and plotting using matplotlib, uh, are good places just to refresh your memory of, of those kind of key functions which are important. Um, in the tutorial sheet. So th those are the self-study uh, activities. Uh, these are good places for you to start. Um, the other thing that I download over here is we've got the lecture notes. So these are available on Canvas. There's a PDF, but there's also a notebook file. And you can read through all of these um, just like you would any other lecture notes, but you're able to also execute parts of the, the, the programs. So there's recommendations of textbooks and all the different uh, Things. So we can, you know, I can run this, which is going to get A and key. I'm going to run this that's going to take our first algorithm. And then further down here, I've got some examples. And we can see that it works. 
if I change this to something else, change the expected outcome to 11, we could run it again and we get a different answer. So that's a way of just testing everything's working and you can play around with the code and the algorithm so you get a sense of what's going on. That's the idea of doing it this way. You can you can interact with it. Um, the If you open up the um, tutorial sheet, uh, that's a bit sparser. In the tutorial sheet, you've just got the kind of questions uh, and a gap for you to sit there and writing write your, your code. Um, you don't have to do your tutorial sheet in the notebook. If you'd rather do it in a, in a separate file, whatever you want to do, is it's, it's entirely up to you. I'd arrange it and talk to your tutor about it. Um, but yeah, you, there's a, at least the structure is there for you to use if you want. OK, so I'm going to shut this down. Um, and then we're going to move on to another video.